Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. 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 Hope you enjoy. Story number one, Xenophobia, written by the R Guy. Humanity. That name conjures up many emotions and feelings for the galactic community. Most would consider humans brutal, savage, and xenophobic, but a species that generally sticks to their borders. The Karshitartex of the Ithath conglomerate believe them to be scared. 500 years ago, humanity was the opposite of its current selves. They were eager and happy, full of joy and hope. All this would be snuffed out when the Yikgur found them. The Yikgur were warmongers who were violent in their expansion. They lost Sirius V, home to more than 4 billion inhabitants. The humans changed after this attack. They reverted to a time I know too much about before they left the confines of their atmosphere, a time that still scars me to this day, many years after I first researched the topic. The humans started a war of such ferocity that the Yukyar crumbled within two years, losing nearly 500 million soldiers. But that was only the beginning. What came next was revenge. The humans started by taking the Hive Queens from this sanctuary and torturing them live in front of the whole universe. Those recordings were archived. I've seen them. And it took 14 hours to finish the torture tapes and took me months to recover from the emotional damage. The human Yakyar conflict was relatively unheard of around common circles until this point. After broadcasting the Hive Queen's torture, the Yakyar civilians started getting herded into concentration camps. The entire galaxy noticed, and they condemned it so much the galaxy army was built to stop the genocide. Unfortunately, the army got bogged down, for the humans had adapted their ground, air, and sea combat techniques to this new environment. Scholars started digging into human history, and what they found was horrifying. War dating back 150,000 years, twice as long as the most vicious races in the galaxy. After this revelation, the coalition armies retreated from whence they came, unwilling to lose billions on an enemy that would fight till the end. So the Yakgar genocide continued. 26 billion Yakgar were killed in an end of the genocide and only 500,000 survived. Thus, this species' entire history was burnt in human flames. The worst part, it only took the humans 44 years to do it. Even to this day, nearly 500 years after the events, some beings still shudder at the names of those survivors spoke of. New Melbourne, River's End, New Petersburg, Oblitus Urbus, and Unit 5492. As the stories of those places slowly trickled out of the newly conquered territory, things like human coat of arms and salutes started getting banned across the galaxy. What the humans did is considered the vilest and most hateful thing this galaxy has ever seen. So the humans retreated into themselves, entering a radio silence for 406 years. Nothing came out of human territory, and many thought that they died out. But 50 years ago... The silence broke with a simple message. They got what they deserved. We are not sorry for what we did to them, but are you the same as them? We hope not, because we will give the galaxy a second chance. So diplomats were sent out with only the galaxy's basic knowledge on appearance plus the shoddy translator, hoping that the humans still spoke English. Luckily, the language had only undergone minor changes, and the humans hadn't changed much either only growing taller. I was not one of those people. I came much later. But from what I got from my older colleagues, it was tough, with bombs being mailed in every week. I've only been here for one Earth year, and it's been relatively pleasant. But I rarely go outside the compound walls, and it is not nice when I do. Since the early days, the compound has built up significantly, introducing new embassies and facilities, taking up an entire one-kilometer-square island. So I have everything I need to be a historian. Half of this may be because Embassy Compound is on Earth, other heartland of the human race. So we get a lot to talk about Xenos violating Earth's natural beauty. The one time I did leave the Embassy, however, was horrifying. 
It was in January 30th that marked the anniversary of the glassing of Sirius V, and I was sent out to an old library to find a book about some human general named Hannibal. As I left the island, I could not help but think of the stories my co-workers told. Then, as the boat docked on the city harbour, I felt the eye of the humans on me, more stunned than anything else. Then the anger set in, and I got my first taste of human rage. Why does a rat like you get to go out in your hidey hole on today of all days? One male yelled before another male followed up with, Go back to your home planet, you rat. Then a female chimed in, You're not welcome here. Finally, a female threw a stone at me before some bodyguards herded me into a vehicle and away from the enraged humans. That was my first time meeting a human civilian, and I have met others since, with most being pleasant to speak to. However, I feel like those emotions I saw were that of a mother seeing her son's killer at his funeral, so I can only see why they must have been angry. I would probably have a similar reaction. However, their actions would have been even more true. Those people were taught about the lives of those lost to the Yukgur attacks would have the personal connection, thus more emotion. The first page of Kachatad, Texas, Inside a Genocide, a collection of stories from humans and the Yukgur. End of story. Story number two. Weaponized food, written by Scooby Wagon. Zixnok was thoroughly confused. Here they were in a combat hole, waiting for the Kurali to show up, and Steve, Zixnok's partner in this particular insanity, was talking about human foods or something. So, uh, you hey humans weaponized your food. No, 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 Steve said. I mean, uh, they've always been pretty tough, but we domesticated them, I, I don't know, centuries ago or something. Uh, but, but the thing is that they're super smart and can break out of an enclosure. When that happens, they breed pretty quick and they go feral. Your food is feral? Well, no, I mean, uh, they used to be domesticated, but a few of them escaped a few years ago and we haven't been able to cull the whole herd. You're telling me that you humans brought a wild terror to our colony world? Well, uh, I mean, as long as they, um, uh, oh. Steve's head popped up over the berm in front of them as he motioned Zuxnock to be quiet. Yeah, I think they found one of the balls, Steve said, as he scanned with his night vision optics. Suddenly, there was a loud squealing noise and some crashing through the brush on the far side of the clearing. Oh, that's not going to end well for them. I think Hogzilla found them, not the other way around. Zix Nox poked his head out and looked through his own night vision optics. About that time, the Corali patrol opened fire with the plasma rifles. A few scored hits, but most shots were wild and the boar didn't slow down in the least. I don't think the plasma rifles are effective against thick hide like that, Steve said. Uh, good to know. The pig closed the distance to the six Corali in only a few seconds. The Corali, for their part, decided to hold their ground. Either bravery or stupidity, Zixnok couldn't tell. But the rate of plasma fire increased wildly as the boar, Zixnox, could now tell that it was an enormous, using the Kurali as a scale reference, ran into their midst, trampling, throwing, and goring any Kurali dumb enough to let it get close. At that range, the Kurali were clearly hitting the animal with at least some of the plasma fire, but that just seemed to make the creature even more angry. Prior to this moment, Zixnox would have not thought that possible. In less than a minute, all six Corali were on the ground. Only one of them was moving. A few seconds later, there was an audible woof of a small explosive device going off, and all was still. Steve stood up. Well, I think that's it for tonight anyway. Want to come check out the scene with me? Zixnok agreed and cautiously approached the scene of the fight. As they approached, they could hear a deep huffling noise. Then they arrived. It became clear that the noise was... The boar was still alive, though terribly wounded. Steve walked up behind it, put a muzzle of his slug thrower against its back of its head, and pulled the trigger. A loud bang, and all was silent. Can't let the poor thing suffer, Steve said, but uh, that, my friend, is why one does not mess with a 1,200-pound pig. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barkey, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 